Hey, I'm Brittany from Lo and Behold Stitchery, and today I'm going to show you how to make an ombre puff quilt. Puff quilts have been around for many, many years. In fact, my grandmother made me a puff quilt over 20 years ago. This quilt is my most treasured possession. She used various scrap fabrics, scrap clothing to put together the warmest, most snuggliest quilt you could ever imagine. It was this very quilt that inspired me to want to make my very own puff quilt. I decided to put my own modern spin on it, and I'll show you that in a few minutes, but for the most part, I constructed it the exact same way that she did. You won't need anything special except for some polyfill batting to stuff your puffs with. So let's get started. You'll start with a four and a half inch square, which will be the top of the puff, and a four inch square, which will be the back of the puff. You can use any sort of scrap fabric for the four inch square, because it will eventually be on the inside of your quilt and no one will see it. To create an individual puff, there will be pleats on each of the four sides of the squares. Make a pleat by aligning the top right edges of the squares together and start sewing a scant quarter inch seam. This is just a seam that's slightly more narrow than a regular quarter inch seam. After a few stitches, you'll align the bottom right edge of the top square with the edges of the bottom square. Gather the fabric to create a pleat in the middle of the square. It doesn't have to be exactly in the middle, so don't stress about perfection. Continue to sew over the pleat and stop about a quarter inch from the edge. With your needle down, pivot the square and repeat this process for an additional two sides. So we will wait to stuff the puff and sew up the fourth side until all of our rows are assembled. I am a big fan of chain piecing. As I was making these puffs, I had the realization that this would be so much quicker if I chain pieced all of my squares. To do this, you'll sew one continuous seam for the same side of all of the puffs. You can chain piece as many or as few puffs as you'd like. Once you're finished, snip the connecting threads between each of the puffs. Then repeat this process for the second and third sides of each of the puffs. Remember to leave the fourth side open. We'll close that up later. Go ahead and create all of your puffs. At this point, this is what they should look like. Once you make all of your puffs, organize them into piles based on color families. My quilt has shades of purple, red, orange, and cream. I'm going to create a gradient across my quilt so that each color fades into the next. Since I have four main colors, I'm thinking about the layout in terms of dividing the quilt into fourths. I'll have purples along one edge, and then they will fade into reds, followed by the orangey rust color that I love so much, which will all fade into the light creams and white. Since I use such a wide variety of fabrics, I have lots of options for blending and fading. My quilt will be 18 rows of 18 squares, which will be a nice throw size quilt. I talk about sizing and fabric requirements on my blog which can all be found in the description of this video. Be sure to step back every now and then and look at the overall effect of your fabrics and adjust accordingly. Continue to tweak it until it's just right. Once you like how things look, it's time to assemble each row. Be sure to keep track of the order of your rows. Sew the puffs together so that the open side of each puff is all on the same side of the row. Use a regular quarter inch seam to sew these squares together. This will ensure that you don't see the stitching from the previous step. Create all of your rows, then the fun begins. <laughs> 
I already got a head start here, but the idea is the same. Pretend this is my first row. Add a handful of polyfill to the first puff. Then using a scant quarter inch seam, stitch along the fourth edge of the puff. Remember to create a pleat and then continue to add filling until the entire row is stuffed and closed up. There's no right or wrong amount of stuffing to put into each puff. It's all based on personal preference. However, I tend to not overstuff these squares as I feel like it creates a more plush and flexible quilt. Once the row is stuffed and closed up, it's time to add the next row. Place this row right sides together with the previous row. Using a regular quarter inch seam, sew the rows together. Remember to sew the edge that is already closed up. As far as seams go, there's no need to try to iron them in one direction or another. I found that sewing the seams down and alternating that direction based on the row helped to manage the bulk. For example, I sewed the first row with my seams turned towards me. Then I'll sew this row with my seams facing away from me. This allows for the seams to nest together. If you find that this is too much material for your machine to handle, consider decreasing the pressure on your presser foot. You can also use a walking foot or a zipper foot. If none of these options seem to help, you might need to use a little less stuffing in your puffs. Continue to add stuffing, close up the puffs, then add rows. You'll keep adding to your quilt until you have a finished quilt top. Now it's time to baste your quilt. Lay your backing right side down on a smooth and flat surface and tape the edges. Then place your batting on top of the backing. Smooth everything out and then add your quilt top. Then using safety pins, baste all three layers of your quilt. I'm using one safety pin for about every two puffs. You want to make sure that it's nice and secure. Once it's all basted, it's time to quilt. I decided to quilt this quilt the same way that my grandmother did, which is using ties. To do this, you'll just need basic hand quilting supplies, a needle, thimble, scissors, and some quilting thread. I'm using DMC Pearl Cotton number eight. So basically I just stitched an X in between each puff and my little tails come out on the back, which I will tie and do a square knot three times. And then I'll snip my threads. Once your quilt is quilted, it's time to bind it up. Again, I wanted to recreate the techniques that my grandmother used, so I folded my backing fabric onto the front of my quilt to create my binding. Now, you can choose to do your binding however you wish, but I really did enjoy this process, especially for this specific quilt. To start, stitch a quarter inch around the perimeter of your quilt. Remember that the bobbin stitches will show on the back of your quilt, so choose a thread color that coordinates with your backing. Then, trim the batting and backing one inch away from the quilt top. And finally, trim the batting so that it's even with your quilt top. Be very, very careful not to accidentally cut the backing fabric. Once the perimeter of your quilt is prepped, it's time to bind. To do this, you'll fold the backing fabric so that the raw edge aligns with the edge of your quilt top. 
Then fold it again so that it covers your stitching from the previous step. You can either machine stitch at this point or hand stitch your binding down. I'm choosing to hand stitch. I have a more in-depth tutorial for this on my blog, so I'll link to that in the description of this video. Keep stitching until you arrive at a corner. To miter the corner, you'll fold the edge of the backing at a 45 degree angle. Then fold the adjacent raw edge of the backing so that it aligns with the adjacent edge of the quilt top. Fold it over again, and you have your corner. Once your binding is finished, congrats, you made a puff quilt.